Hello folks, I thought I'd give you an overview of my latest setup and cable management. And uh, you might notice right away if you've seen older videos of mine that I no longer have a setup table behind my telescope. It used to follow around my scope like a, a caboose, but I don't need that anymore. I don't have an outside computer running everything because I have a 20 meter line that goes uh, all the way inside my house into my office. And let me just give you an overview from the ground up, starting with the, the wheels that I put under each tripod leg. I use those wheels to roll out my telescope. Of course, I remove them when I'm ready to do my polar alignment and imaging. And the next thing you might see is uh, uh, tape to the one of the tripod legs is my power adapter. And I got this idea from DJ. Thanks, DJ. It was a really good idea. I've got my Moonlight controller strapped on one side of the power strip. I've got a USB adapter strapped to the other side. I've only got uh, three things plugged into that USB hub because I also make use of my camera that has a USB hub. So that, that works out well. And um, I've, I've just got some other extra power adapters uh, plugged into the other leg that, that lead into my uh, power strip. Now, uh, I want to give a shout out to Sean Maloney, my friend Doug. I know they use rig runners. I know other people use that Pegasus power box. So for now, I'm, I'm using a power strip. It's kind of clunky, but you know what? Everything works and it works well. So I'm in no hurry to, to change right now. And everything down here... Maybe it's it's not a work of art, but it's all out of the way. It's low, it's nothing down here moves when my scope is guiding. It's all stationary stuff and out of the way. So I, I'm good with it. And I've got my, my handset on the other tripod leg. And of course, I'm using uh, my Celestron CGX mount. It's served me well over the past uh, almost two years now. And um, when people see my, my setup, uh, I've got an Explorer um, 127mm refractor, um, Explorer Scientific, and I've got an ST80 guide scope. And when people see my setup, they're like, this doesn't look right. It, it, it's scooted way too far forward. How could that possibly be in balance? And what I have to tell them is, if I, if I scooted my telescope backwards, the rear of my scope would run into my tripod legs. I, I've had that happen too many times. So what I had to do is I, I scooted everything forward as much as I could, which made it really front heavy. And, and, and so what I had to do is I had to add more weight to the rear end. I added some ADM accessory um, counterweights to the rear of my saddle. I had to scoot my ST80 guide scope down as far as I could, because now it serves a double purpose as a counterweight, not just for guiding. And and, and that, that, that really balances me out and it, it helps. So I, I'm not banging into my legs these days. See what I'm telling you about? Non-stop planes. And since I scooted uh, my, my guy scope down on the mounting bar, I was able to put my dew heater control box just with Velcro. I just strapped it right to the mounting bar up front there. I've got one heater strip on my guide scope. I've got two on my refract, my main imaging scope. And um, I'm using a ZWO um, ASI 1600 camera, uh, a ZWO filter wheel, electronic filter wheel with astronomic filters inside. I've got a spacer here. I'm using a Orion 0.8 focal reducer to bring my speed down from F F75 to F6. And I've got um, another adapter so that I can thread my reducer onto my moonlight focuser. Everything here is threaded. I'm not using compression rings or self-centering um, devices. None of that. It's all threaded. And I'm using a Lodestar X2 guides, um, guide camera with two extensions coming out of my guide scope there that that's most of the, the oh and I've got a a pole master up front 
um, clamp to the front of my uh, saddle there. That's that's really the gist of my, my setup. But I wanted to show you the trick to cable management. And um, it, it doesn't really matter how beautiful or how ugly it is down, down here. None of this matters. The trick to cable management is <laughs> what my, my friend uh, Jason told me. He even drew me a picture. You go from this point to that point and you'll be good. I'm wait, let me wait for this plane to pass. It's kind of noisy. I can't even hear myself talk. Okay, see that, that was the second plane in the span of five minutes. You see what I'm dealing with here? Okay. This is the key. Now you don't, like I had, like I see a lot of other people in the way I used to have it, you don't want dangling cables coming off the end of your scope. Um, I've seen it firsthand. It can make your guiding definitely a little more bumpy, especially if it's windy outside. And Jason said, here's what you do. He drew me a picture because I couldn't really figure this out on my own. I couldn't think of the way to do it. And what he did is said is, whatever cables you have here, wrap them underneath. And they all come together here. And I strap them all to the rear end of my saddle. And then from my saddle, I'm using TechFlex here. I've got it going all the way to the base of my mount right there. This little loop right there that you see, that is the only line that is gonna move during the course of the night. With this loop, I can point to the lowest objects in the north, the lowest objects in the south, and no, there's no dangling cables anywhere else in my system. So everything else is stationary except for that one. I think it's so cool. Finally, I think I've got a, a setup that, that I'm satisfied with. And if you saw my last imaging um, video, you'll see my guiding was in the 0.4 ring. And I'm seeing that 0.4 and 0.5 a lot more often these days. So um, that's great. So anyway, I don't know if you found this video useful, but uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you later.